Hey there, fellow astrophotographers! Living under urban skies can be quite a challenge when it comes to capturing breathtaking images of the night sky. That's why finding the perfect light pollution filter for astrophotography is so crucial. In this video, I've divided the content into three parts to help you make an informed decision. We'll first talk about what light pollution is, then we'll discuss different options to deal with light pollution by choosing the appropriate filters, and in part three we'll discuss some well-known filters used by astrophotographers to effectively deal with light pollution in an urban area. Hey everyone, I'm Wido Oelemans, an astrophotographer from Utrecht, the Netherlands. I'm passionate about planetary imaging and astrophotography, and on this channel I love sharing my knowledge with you. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel, like the video, and share it with others. Your support means a lot to me. Let's first talk about light and light pollution. In the vast expanse of the universe, objects emit light in various wavelengths. As astrophotographers, we focus on capturing the visible part of the spectrum, which ranges from violet to red, approximately from 400 to 700 nanometers. The ideal scenario is to photograph these celestial wonders under dark skies, undisturbed by any light pollution. Unfortunately, light pollution is a common issue in suburban areas. The main culprits are mercury lights, low pressure sodium lights, high pressure sodium lights and LED lights. Each of these sources emit light at different wavelengths, adding to the overall glow in our city skies. But fear not, we have light pollution filters to help combat these artificial lights. However, determining the best filter for your situation can be difficult. It depends on your unique circumstances, the camera you use, and your preferences for capturing deep sky objects. So let's discuss some tips that are useful for choosing the best light pollution filter for you. First of all, it's important to understand the severity of light pollution in your area. Websites like Light Pollution Map can provide valuable information about your local sky's border class, which rates darkness and visibility. A great smartphone app for this is Clear Outside, which also offers detailed weather forecasts. The Bordel class scale ranges from class 1, excellent dark sky, to class 9, severely light polluted sky. Knowing your Bordel class helps determine the specific challenges you face and guides your filter choice. Keep in mind that visiting a remote dark sky site is the ultimate solution, but for many of us capturing the night sky from home is both convenient and can be rewarding as well. It is also important to identify the sources of light pollution in your vicinity. Are your neighbors using those bright LED lights? Or do nearby industrial areas contribute to that orange glow you see at night? Understanding the specific wavelengths emitted by these sources will help you select a filter that effectively blocks them. Also, consider how much of the natural colors of a deep sky object you're willing to sacrifice. Ultra-high contrast filters can help minimize or even eliminate artificial light pollution. However, keep in mind that an ultra-high contrast filter can also block the natural yellow and orange light emitted by some deep sky objects like galaxies and star clusters. Narrowband imaging is another technique used to combat light pollution and capture stunning images of deep sky objects in urban areas. Instead of creating a true color image, narrowband filters focus on capturing specific elements present in deep sky objects. These filters are commonly used to capture emission nebulae that emit hydrogen and oxygen along with other elements like sulfur. The most dominant emission line in star forming regions like the Orion Nebula is hydrogen alpha at 656.3 nanometers. It contributes to the strong red color of most nebulae. Another important line is oxygen 3 at 500.7 nanometers emitted by doubly ionized oxygen atoms. This line is in the blue green portion of the spectrum and is often used to capture emissions from planetary nebulae. Singly ionized sulfur emits light in the deep red part of the spectrum beyond H alpha at the 672.4 nanometer line. Although weaker than H alpha and O3, sulfur 2 is commonly used after these two filters. Hydrogen beta at 486.1 nanometers is the second most common emission line of hydrogen located in the blue part of the light spectrum. A popular application of narrowband filters is to create a Hubble pellet picture, which is named after the famous technique used by the Hubble Space Telescope team. This technique allows us to differentiate between different elements present in nebulas, such as the iconic Pillars of Creation. Here's the renowned Hubble picture of the Pillars of Creation, and alongside it I have a picture of myself taken from my own backyard, using narrowband filters and the same processing technique. 
Another option is to create what is called an HARGB picture. In this approach, you use an HA narrowband filter to capture the strongest signal from an emission nebula and then combine it with a broadband color picture. Let me show you an example where I combined the H alpha emission line of the Orion Nebula with a color picture, resulting in this composite image that showcases the overall beauty of the nebula. When it comes to choosing the right light pollution filters for your astrophotography setup, it's essential to consider the size that fits your equipment. The decision will depend on specific configurations of your gear. Experienced astrophotographers like myself often use dedicated filter wheels placed in front of their cameras, which can either accommodate 1.25 or 2 inch filters. Opting for larger filters has the advantage of minimizing vignetting issues, although they are more expensive. If you're using a DSLR camera, it's worth noting that dedicated clip-in filters are available for both crop sensor and full frame cameras. These filters can be inserted inside the body of your camera, between the lens or telescope and the camera sensor. Let's shift our focus to actual filters that are popular among astrophotographers and available on the market today. In this section, we will first explore broadband light pollution filters and ultra high contrast filters, and then we'll delve into narrowband filters. Links and more extensive information about these filters can be found on my website and in the video description below. One of the most popular broadband filters on the market today is the Optolong L Pro has gained significant popularity among astrophotographers due to its ability to capture true colors emitted by deep sky objects while also blocking out parts of the light spectrum that contribute to light pollution. This makes it ideal for capturing galaxies and globular clusters in their true colors. Additionally, the Optolong L Pro is relatively affordable in price. So let's take a closer look at its characteristics. The Optolong L Pro filter blocks light at specific ranges, effectively reducing light pollution. In particular, it blocks significant blue light pollution from LED lights near the 425 nanometer line and green light emitted by mercury lights around the 535 nanometer line. It also blocks most of the yellow and orange light emitted by low and high pressure sodium lights around 575 and 620 nanometer line. However, it still allows some light in the yellow and orange range to be captured, enabling users to take close to true color images while blocking out light pollution in urban environments at the same time. This is especially useful when imaging galaxies and globular clusters, like this recent picture of M101 where I've imaged the recently discovered supernova in the Pinwheel Galaxy. Let's also mention the ultra-high contrast SNL booster filters from Bader. These ultra-high contrast filters effectively block out the yellow and orange parts of the light spectrum. In addition, these filters also capture some of the light in the near-infrared part of the light spectrum. Although this light is not visible to the human eye, dedicated astro-modified cameras can detect it. By translating this light into a red color, the camera can capture additional signals of nebulae that emit light in the near-infrared range. Let's move on to narrowband filters. There are two approaches to capturing narrowband data in astrophotography. The first method involves using a color camera equipped with a narrowband filter to simultaneously capture multiple elements. Although color cameras are somewhat less effective at capturing deep sky objects as compared to monochrome cameras, it also saves time and reduces complexity by eliminating the need to photograph one target using multiple filters. You can find more information about the pros and cons of using a color versus a monochrome camera for astrophotography on my website. Let's first discuss popular narrowband filters suitable for color cameras. The Optolong L Enhance is a popular narrowband filter specifically designed for color cameras. It allows photographers to simultaneously capture the H alpha, H beta, and O3 emission lines of deep sky objects using a color camera. Unlike broadband light pollution filters, the L Enhance enhances the signal to noise ratio by blocking additional wavelengths that may contribute to noise. The Optolong L Extreme is a popular and alternative version of the L Enhance filter also to be used with color cameras. It offers an even greater contrast when capturing emission nebulae, planetary nebulae and supernova remnants. The L Extreme filter has a dual pass band precisely targeting the H alpha and O3 wavelengths while excluding the weaker H beta line. This results in enhanced contrast in fainter regions of nebulae, even in light polluted skies. If you decide to perform narrowband imaging with a monochrome camera, you'll need separate filters to capture each emission line separately. 
For example, the SHO narrowband filter set from ZWO consists of three narrowband filters designed for monochrome cameras. These filters allow transmission of ionized sulfur or S2, hydrogen alpha or H alpha, and ionized oxygen or O3 within a 7 nanometer bandwidth. By capturing images with each filter and combining them during processing, astrophotographers can achieve high contrast images of celestial objects like emission nebulae, planetary nebulae, and supernova remnants. Here's an example of a starless picture of the Rosette Nebula, which I've created using ZWO's narrowband filters and a monochrome camera. Absalon and Antlia are two alternative brands that offer sets of 6.5 nanometer and 3 nanometer narrowband filters for monochrome cameras. Similarly to the ZWO filters, these filter sets include S2, H alpha, and O3 filters that can be used in combination with monochrome astro cameras. One last thing about light pollution. There are ways to make a difference. One option is to take an active role and raise awareness among local governments about the issue of light pollution. By providing them with information and suggesting solutions, we can help them understand the negative impact of excessive artificial lighting in urban areas. It's important to emphasize that light pollution not only affects astrophotography enthusiasts like ourselves, but it is also wasteful and disrupts the natural circadian rhythms of wildlife. By working together, we can encourage measures to limit light pollution and create a more sustainable environment for both humans and wildlife. Thanks for watching and clear skies.